Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing here a pure deck profile for Gokis. This is just a pure Goki build. There is no Phantom Knights. There is uh, none of the, uh, the Code Breakers. There's just no other additions to this. This is just a pure deck and the interesting thing is this, when you're actually focusing on a pure variant of a particular deck, you don't realize that you could actually do quite a bit with just the pure deck on its own. So I think this deck is definitely quite a sleeper deck because it can actually do so much to the point where it's actually considered a rogue deck, even as a pure deck on its own. So I'm definitely really impressed by this. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, here's my particular take on it. So hope you guys are ready for it. But to begin, we are going to be starting off with our highest level monsters. We have over here Goki Moonsault, we have over here uh, Goki Rai Scorpio, and we have Goki Bear Hug. So I'm only playing one copy of each of these. Uh, I think for many of you guys, you might already know about Rai Scorpio being such a crucial card to be able to summon itself so easily, uh, as long as you have no monsters or if everything is Gokis, which works really well. I still think playing it at one is just all the more enough that you actually need here. But as for Bear Hug and Moon Salt, uh, they are cards that are definitely a bit more on the uh, techie side of things and not too many people are actually playing them, at least in a more competitive variant. But I do believe that both of these definitely offer their own unique uh, changes to this particular deck that uh, would kind of push the boundaries of what a Goki deck would normally do in a more competitive uh, state. Uh, but yeah, Moonsault is really amazing. Uh, you could essentially just reveal it from your hand and target a Goki you control and then special summon this and then just bounce back your other Goki, which is uh, definitely just really nice. You can then also target a Goki Link monster and return it to the extra deck, which essentially allows you to recycle it. But of course, you could also then add a Goki monster from your graveyard to your hand in addition to that. It's great for resource management and is something that is tend to be overlooked in a more competitive build, but in this particular case, it works just fine. As for Bear Hug, uh, if it's actually special summoned by the effect of a Goki card, in this case by Suprex most likely, uh, otherwise you could still also do it by rematch. Um, or if this card is normal summoned as well, uh, you could essentially just target one face up monster your opponent controls and its attack becomes half the original attack, which is definitely pretty nice. Uh, of course, it's until the end of the turn, but that's all you really need because you're going into your big monsters and attacking over them. Um, so yeah, definitely very nice there. And again, if this is sent to the graveyard, then you add a Goki, just like all the other Gokis uh, that, well, the majority of the Gokis would do. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely a really nice engine and I believe it to be something that is worthy of playing. I think it's pretty obvious that we're going to be playing three copies here of Suprex and we're going to be playing three copies here of the Twist Cobra. Uh, at least for a pure variant, you would be playing three copies of each of these. Um, if you were to switch into a more competitive build where you're actually mixing in different archetypes or at least the Phantom Knights and the Code Breakers, then you might be decreasing the copies of Twist Cobra down to two, sometimes even one, but in this particular case you are playing a pure build of it, so we're going to be focusing on all three copies. Uh, moving on, we also have over here our three copies of Headbat, just so easy to summon out. And we also have our two copies of Octo Stretch, just really amazing. Uh, works out for the deck as well. So uh, really not much else to really uh, say about them because no matter what build you're playing them in, um, these particular cards are kind of staples. So it's a bit self-explanatory at this point. Another card that's kind of self-explanatory would also be the Goki Guts. We're playing two copies of it, that's really all we really need. But uh, yeah, I'm not really going to explain it since most people already know what it does. But a card that most people might not know would be Ring Trainer. So Ring Trainer is if you control no monsters, you can reveal this card, then target a Goki Link monster that's in your graveyard. You could special summon it, then uh, special summon this card, at least from your hand, then you could special summon that target. But it just loses 500 attack, which is fine because you're essentially going for Link Climbing in this particular case. So it's definitely something that is uh, quite underestimated. So. 
yeah, definitely quite nice there. Otherwise, it could also act as a wall as well, uh, because it can't be destroyed by battle as long as you control another Goki Link monster. Uh, but aside from that, it's just an easy summon and uh, again, more resource management. And we're finally playing here the one copy of Iron Claw. Uh, just a really nice card to do a bit of a boost up. Yeah, it's quite underestimated as a card. Now, as for more generic supporters, we are playing here the Gillosaurus. We're playing a Junk Forward. Playing here a Blue Mountain Butter Spy. And then I'm going to follow up here with the three copies of Fire Flint Lely. Uh, these are all really amazing cards, definitely allowing you to just generate more monsters onto the board to go for your Link Summons. And I'm trying not to play too many cards that are outside of the Goki monsters, just because that uh, you actually, in a pure build, would lose the synergy if you had too many cards that are outside of this particular archetype. So for spells, I think it's pretty obvious we're playing uh, three copies of the rematch. I mean, it's just three summons, two summons that is, so really great. We're playing here the one copy of uh, Rodar, definitely a really fantastic card, of course, to add pretty much your entire deck. Uh, you also have here two downbeats. This is something that's a really nice card because I'm playing uh, so many different varieties of levels and when you have something like a six and five in your deck, you can easily make the most out of downbeat, allowing you to just get more monsters out onto the board. And of course, we're gonna be playing here the one copy of Goki Face Turn. This is definitely a really interesting card. It kind of allows you to recycle certain things, but uh, it's all the more worth it to play. We're also playing here Raigeki and Harpy's Feather Duster, kind of like just means of clearing the board, allowing you to execute your plays, uh, which is definitely quite nice. A lot of players these days kind of focus a bit on just bringing out monsters that can negate monsters but they don't really do anything that can deal with spells and traps. So to play these definitely just works out really well. It's more about disrupting the opponent's monsters now as opposed to uh, like spells and traps because it's just not as common. So because of that, the opponent tends to overlook it and they have no response to Raigeki or Harpies for the Duster. And those two are kind of self-explanatory, but I did also want to push for Dark Hole as well, just because I believe that even though you can destroy your own monsters, uh, it kind of benefits you because Gokis obviously will add more anyway, so it has that synergy towards it. Uh, but just needed a bit more explanation than the Raigeki and Harpies for the Duster. Uh, but we're also going to be playing here the uh, two equip spells for Isolde. So we have here Moon Mirror Shield and we have Phoenix Blade. Uh, both really amazing. Moon Mirror Shield works really well because we have so many big monsters these days in this particular format. Uh, such as the Despiers that uh, sometimes just using it on one of your weak monsters to get over one of your opponent's bigger monsters. It's absolutely worth it. All right, so the final card we're playing in our deck here is something that is kind of the reason why I'm actually playing a pure deck, and that is three copies of Goki Finishing Move. Uh, so this card, you could essentially target a Goki Link monster and it gains attack equal to its Link rating times a thousand until the end of the turn. That is amazing. Um, the Goki deck can easily go into your Link 4s, so you're essentially getting 4,000 attack, which is pretty amazing. And also it does piercing as well. So your opponent is going to have a hard time dealing with this. Uh, absolutely amazing. Now for the rest of this turn after this card resolves, you can't declare attacks except with Goki monsters. And that was kind of one of the reasons why so many different players were pretty much reluctant to actually add this card to their Goki decks, but that's because they're not playing pure decks, they're playing competitive builds, which means that this card wasn't really synergetic with it. But to play this card in a pure variant is definitely well worth it. All right, so moving on to the extra deck, it's really easy to go with the extra deck here because of the fact that the extra deck just really depends on the Goki Link monsters that are available. So that's just one of the uh, few perks of this particular deck here. So we're just gonna go through the strongest ones first. We have over here our Power Load Ogre. Uh, we have over here our Destroy Ogre. We have Goki the Master Ogre and we have Goki 
the giant ogre. So all of these are essentially our link forwards, our potential boss monsters that we can go for, and we don't have to worry about going into any other kind of boss monsters that are outside of Gokis, because these ones will get the boost from your Goki finishing move and uh, yeah it's definitely just really fantastic there but having four boss monsters is definitely something uh, I find to be quite uh, intriguing indeed but uh, yeah you could definitely also adjust the ratios as well some of them you can put down to zero and then add more power load ogre specifically being a really good one just to get over big monsters now as for the link threes we're going to be playing here the thunder ogre the great ogres and we're also going to be playing the blade ogre so with this particular stance on it all uh we have thunder ogre giving you the extra summon the great ogre is just really nice to you know lessen your opponent's um monsters attack and this is great because you're going up against decks such as despiers you're going up against decks such as uh, virtual worlds i mean it's just a bunch of fusions it's a bunch of synchros and having Goki the Great Ogre here is actually working out really well for this particular deck. Uh, and Blade Ogre is just uh, a bit more variety for the deck itself as well, but it itself is also a fantastic card to go for a second attack during the battle phase. Uh, the last Link 3 would be uh, Goki the Solid Ogre, definitely also a really fantastic card as well um, that can't be destroyed by battle or card effects as long as it's pointing to a Goki monster and that's any Goki monster, not just exclusively to Links or anything like that. Uh, so that definitely gives it a bit of great defense for you. Um, but yeah, with that being said, let's move on to the Link 2s. Finally, we have over here our two Jet Ogres, we have here one Heal Ogre, uh, and that's pretty much it for the whole Goki lineup. And we're going to be playing two Toolbox cards, being Cerberus and Phoenix, allowing us to take care of some pesky items as well, but also allowing us to Link Climb using these two particular cards. And with Gokis going with so many different names as well, it just works out so well with the Nightmares. Uh, definitely very synergetic with this particular build, or this particular deck in general. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, this was essentially the whole deck profile. Um, I do hope you guys actually enjoyed this. This was something that was more so a fun take for this particular deck. I really was just getting sick of this particular competitive format. At least um, the previous few formats have been a bit stale and um, it's just been getting worse and worse. So to then... Uh, sideline the focus into something that is uh, less competitive and more into something that is casual and fun it could break the pace so i definitely do encourage that if you're finding the game to not work out at the moment but with that being said thanks for joining me today i hope you'll have a fantastic day i'll see you all next time